The Huawei P40 and P40 Pro could be launching globally with Google services included, and I'll be sharing all the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe, follow by the bell. So following the ban on Huawei, we've had plenty of news concerning their new Harmony OS. This is to combat problems they face not being able to include Google services on their phones. So far, we've only seen Harmony OS on the Honor Vision TV, but it hasn't been released on a phone as of yet, with the Mate 30 releasing in China only without Google services. In the global market, pretty much every Android device contains Google services, so it's a huge issue for Huawei's success. It seems as though Huawei and USA are trying to work out a deal following the trade ban, as Huawei have been granted another 90-day temporary extension. The extension allows Huawei to work with US companies, although they still don't have permission to include Google services. The company are reportedly working on a global release of the Huawei P40 and the P40 Pro, and there's a possibility that the ban could be over by the time they release, meaning we could see Google services on the P40 and P40 Pro. If this isn't the case, then the phones will be released with Huawei's mobile services, and these are alternatives, but of course, users won't be able to access Gmail and other Google apps by default. According to reports, Huawei are also attempting to solve the issue by shipping the P40 range with dual operating systems. The user will be able to choose if they want to use Android or Harmony OS on boot. Now, of course, when it comes to the Android open source project they now provide on their phones, although there isn't Google services included in the device, there are multiple ways to obtain them. We've had LZ Play, which allows users to install Google services, and while this did come from an unverified developer, many went ahead and used it. Another method was restoring the device with a software backup that already had LZ Play installed. And finally, people are running VMOS, which is a virtual machine operating system, although this method does introduce lag along with longer load times. When it comes to the P40 itself, we already have many rumors floating around about its design and specifications. It's thought that the design will stay relatively similar to the current P range, with of course the hardware upgrades. The Huawei P range is known for great photography, so we'll no doubt see some great camera upgrades as well. We'll likely have an all-screen device with a notch camera and we expect a full HD plus OLED display. It's no doubt going to be using the Kirin 990 system on chip and we should see variants with up to 8 or 10 gigs of RAM. Storage options will likely be up to 512 with the inclusion of expandable storage with nano memory cards. When it comes to the cameras, they'll of course be in the form of Leica cameras and rumors are suggesting that we may be getting a Penta camera device this time round. The photography in Huawei devices has always been incredible, so it will no doubt top the DxO Mark charts as usual. The device will be 5G compatible, and battery capacity will depend on the version, but we'd expect the Pro to stay around 4200mAh. Given that they usually provide some water resistance, we can no doubt expect the P40 and P40 Pro to be IP68 water resistant. Of course, with the launch expected in March, it won't be long until we receive some solid leaks, and as always, I'll keep you posted as they come in. But as always, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the P40 or the P40 Pro, and do you think we'll see Google services return to Huawei devices? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.